as I mentioned previously with the yesterday's video, I've been reading a lot of this stuff that's going on in the States, you know. There are a lot of there's all these protests, uh, especially in the States where they haven't really been hit as hard because some of the numbers in New York compared to LA just don't make any sense really. It doesn't really add I don't really understand why one side of the or, of America has been hit really hard and the other side hasn't especially when you consider but they but of course I understand you know there's a lot of distance in between both um you know America's you know who has a huge land mass I'm assuming but and maybe some of the travel was stopped interstate that maybe helped it but some of the numbers I think the number I don't know it's like 10 times the deaths in New York than it is in LA for the most part I think so I think New York is like in the 12 that I looked at last and LA is like 1000 mark so again, I'm not too sure it's because, you know, LA happens to be, there's a huge population of people that live there who are very affluent, who might have access to medical supplies or testing or whatever it may be. Or it's the fact that most people in New York, but then New York would have a lot of affluent people there too, wouldn't you? Or maybe a lot of the affluent people that live in New York went upstate or they went down south somewhere i don't know really but it just doesn't make any sense so but the debate is interesting regardless hearing people you know from the states talk about why they think stuff should reopen it kind of makes you think maybe there is a there is a scenario maybe there is a scenario because i remember seeing this doctor talk about it where there is a scenario where some states could argue that lockdowns were a bit heavy-handed right maybe lockdowns only apply when you are at death's door and people are just dropping like flies everywhere you need to you know refrain from you need to make sure that people stay in so it doesn't spread as fast as it can but when it's a few cases it might not be smart to lock everyone down it might be smart to kind of phase it out but then that requires adequate testing and that requires preparation that requires resources and what i think has happened is that the places where they haven't had the resources or the preparation or the timing they're the ones that were heavy you know they smacked the like lockdown hammer really hard and fast because they had no way to deal with it that was the only viable option available on the table right um it's similar to when you watch those um uh those crime shows right or those kind of anti-terrorist movies or those kind of terrorist yeah we're gonna beat terrorism movies right and then someone runs into the door and it's like, oh, I've got the idea. we got to do this, to do this, to do that. And then everyone in the room just goes with it because no one's just got anything. They've all been run dry, right? They've tried all their plans and it's just not, it's not worked. So when you run in with any kind of half-baked, sensible seeming idea, people just latch onto it because they just want some solution out of the misery that they're going through. So maybe this is what's going on now with the lockdowns in some states. Maybe some people are like, you know what? I don't know what we're going to do. So let me just do this because everyone else is doing it and I won't get blamed for not doing nothing. At least that's what people are probably thinking because, you know, politicians are um, a selfish bunch, right? Um, they're, they're not a little bit, they're entirely self-centered. They're just worrying about making sure that they're able to get reelected um, next time around or they want to, people to remember them and they want they want to have good sentiment, right? You want to have your poll numbers looking good. You want people to think of you in a positive light for the most part i think there's some politicians that don't actually care but most of them do care what people think of them so they're probably like you know what let me just go with this option instead of looking at the numbers and analyzing it correctly and then now you're in an issue where for the most part most governments in the uk is the same it's easy to lock something down but to start it back up again in a sensible way with some kind of you know sensible discussions is really difficult because now it's a political thing isn't it you're seeing people on the right who are more let's say uh, consp- uh cons- not conspiratorial but they're a little bit you know they question everything for the most part they're not that much which is interesting because you would have thought the democrats would be more questioning government right they would have been the ones that are a little bit more libertarian in their ways they would not want too much government oversight they wouldn't want people kind of enforcing rules and arresting mums and parks you'd think so isn't it it's like it lacks humanity but actually it's the people on the right who are like you know what this is nuts like you should be able to decide and, and i think a lot of them have been quite clear in that in that they don't mind they don't mind risking their lives if if it means they can go back to work they were well, there because they don't expect much in it we have the nhs they don't really expect to get looked after looked after by their government right they're more worried about their guns getting taken away than they are worried about expecting you know checks in the mail all that stuff is a pleasant surprise i think for most americans they don't ever get any handouts food tokens are quite hard to come by 
uh, benefits aren't what they are in other countries so when they are told to stay in for an unspecified timeline unspecified amount of time they're not big they're not really given any kind of indication when it's going to be over there's no collective consensus as to what's happened how to stop it um or how to kind of alleviate some of the issues or you know there's no one really talking about it in a clear sensible way it just becomes nuts so now the politicians are worried because it's a political issue they're not well worried about it. every move they make is gonna either push them further to the right or further to the left which is nutty in it really looking at how the world is transformed into this place where any kind of any you know any disaster that happens is regardless of where it happens regardless of how it happens it's going to get turned into some sort of political uh, talking point or battleground regardless whether it's in europe whether it's in southeast asia whether it's in africa whether it's in the states whether it's in north america central america south america the way the world is now at the moment it just there's no way of dealing with things in just a clear rational humanistic way right where you're trying to make sure you're inflicting the less possible damage on people or on your population or on your you know constituents or on your citizens you want to make sure you know they just have they're, they're okay no one's thinking about that everyone's just thinking about how can i get out of this without incurring the most amount of damage during this whole debacle because no one wants no one wants to come out of this being regarded as like the dummy like um who's that guy was it plume plumer daniel was it plumber plumer brumer do you remember the dude from when the whole afghanistan war was happening and he took over he was one of the lead guys and he was blamed for essentially changing how they classified afghanistan soldiers or something i forgot what it was but he was um inadvertently responsible for the uprising in resistance in afghanistan because he essentially took away all the benefits that these ex-soldiers had other they were leaning on and kind of gave the people on the ground no leverage in terms of how they can negotiate just the whole clusterfuck right he was like the guy in head office so yeah the one with a suit and tie on or the one with actual gun in his hand no one wants to be that guy right no one wants to be blamed for anything inadvertently you want to just be the one providing solutions but the solutions right now are really 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 difficult to enact especially if you're somebody that doesn't really have much of a moral backbone you don't have much character there's nothing really defining who you are you just kind of go with the wind so you get voted next it's not the best time to be a politician right now i'll tell you that much